Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is the poor game lander here, and today we have to talk about Crimson Ren of the True North. I just finished reading this book, but I can honestly say, like, I pretty much enjoyed this book more hundred times more than I enjoyed the previous Clownfish book. This book is definitely better than previous Clownfish in so many ways. You can tell that they had a story with this book from start to end. Even though this book is, is definitely a part one in like a, con uh, like a series of books. Well, <laughs> yeah, so it's a part one in a series of books and it does tell. What I can say from reading this book, it's definitely taking inspiration from a Disney movie that came out back in the day. The name of the movie is Treasure Planet. I recall the movie when I was reading the book and a lot of the art that I see in the book does remind me of that movie. And I think that's a very fantastic thing to be honest that it takes inspiration from that even with a flying ship no when i think about it it's definitely from treasure planet the movie back in i think early 2000 and or something but i remember that movie from disney and it does reading this book reminds me a lot of it a lot of parts of it and i can see elements of that you can also see elements that of i would say old school anime um, series that I used to watch when I was younger. You can see a lot of, especially from the character design, I can see a lot of that in it. I think overall it was a good story. I said I enjoyed my time with the book and it's a fantastic story. And I think this one, I would say, even if you're not a fan of the Clownfish TV, you can definitely enjoy this book. You would definitely enjoy this book. If you're a fan of like adventure and those type of things, you would definitely find enjoyment in this book. So uh, if you're a fan of adventure stories like Treasure Planet, probably Atlantis, like those Disney type of adventure movies, you should definitely check this book out. It reminds me a lot of it. And uh, the pacing in the story is fantastic. I never felt like I was being, like it, got, it never got too jarring. Everything felt like it had a meaning to it and purpose to it. And everything pushes the story forward. It never feel, felt like I'm wondering why this segment is here. You felt like, okay, so I understand we're doing this to get this and we're doing this to get this. And it pushes the story forward. And even and when elements of things going good, then you see your things go awry. And it's just very interesting in the, that way. And, I, and I was very surprised and very happy that this story in particular it was this well done. So <laughs> that to me is like a brief overview of what the story is. So let's now let's let's talk about the book itself. One thing that surprised me about this book, this comic book in particular, because I'm a big fan of the Reverse, and the book quality is always fantastic there. But this book shocked me in terms of how the cover is. The cover being hardcover, I was pleasantly surprised. I wasn't expecting hardcover book comic book you know i was never expecting that because i'm so used to the ripper first and even with the found fish that's not hardcover but it's a soft cover and this one's a hardcover book and i love it i really love it i even end up buy a copy for my sister this is how much i enjoy this story and i want other people to read this story and now what i feel about this book that it has true potential and I really want there to be an issue or volume 2 for Crimson Rand of the True Not North. Wait, there's going to be because how the story ends is on, on a cliffhanger in a sense. So I expect there to be more. So the cover of the book is fantastic and open opening the book you can definitely, when you touch the book, hardcover definitely feels that quality. Open the book the art i like the medieval style art they got they went for i loved it the art is in this book is 10 times better than the art in the clown the previous and clownfish book the art is so much better in this one you can you can tell they know exactly what they wanted to do with the story or exactly how they want to tell the story based on how, the, how they want the world to look and everything based on how the art looks I had no issue with it. I think the art was fantastic. It looks nice. It looks very premium quality in my opinion. For a comic book, I I really loved love this love the art. The art was really well done. I think I hope, I must say, the um, Keon and uh, Geeky Sparkle, the owners of Clownfish Studios and, and uh, the two main heads of Clownfish TV, I hope they do more. 
I hope they continue with this quality, this quality within the Crimson Rain series. And I kind of want to purchase the, <laughs> the Shadow Binders Volume 3, but I just needed to read Shadow Binders 1, Volume 1 and 2 first. Oh my god, guys, Neon, Keons, get on that. Please, I need Volume 1 and 2 of the Shadow Binders get those printed i don't care if it's limited copy we need those pr printed for those people that are jumping in and want to read shadow Bionis 3 but just need to read volume one and two first i don't want to be feel left out i don't want to feel like i'm missing the story when i started volume three so i would say please volume one and two as a special limited limited edition through your website I put the money up, please. I just need that. I need it. The Crimson Ran art, love the art. Definitely love the art. The art is phenomenal. It's beautiful, well drawn, and the, the art complements and it makes you understand the character, right? It's like it, it gives, it, it makes you understand the, the dynamic of even, for example, the, the parents, the two parents that are in the book and how they interact the father's really huge, this huge guy right this huge guy and you can see that even though he's huge he's a gentle soul you know you know you can tell that from how he talks and how he behaves the very good father you can tell he gets upset he's cold he he, he, he talks with so much respect and I, I just i just love how that was written i love how the mom was written the mom was written phenomenal too the mom was fantastic um i remember there was a in the early parts of the book ren and tristan got in trouble and uh, the mom scolded them but you can also tell during the scolding there was a part of love still in it you know she's upset of what they've done right but you can tell it's a, it comes from a place of love and not anger or hate and I, and I think that was really good i think that that was a really good depiction and the father is just the same too in his depiction he's a very trying guy he's trying to provide for his family but because of where they come from they're, they're a bit of outcasts basically of the part of the of the world they live in called Satan. i definitely think with that type of storytelling kiki keon knocked it out I loved it. I want more. What I love about it, I love the art. I love, I love the character design. I love the story. I love the fact that it's it's going on an adventure. It's it's not to save the world or anything. It's going on an adventure to protect their family. And I just love it. I just love those wholesome type of stories. And this is why I say it reminds me of Treasure Planet so much because it's it's a similar concept with the Treasure Planet. But this is just tell the, that, that type of concept being told in a different way and you can tell that we're on an adventure we're on to see this person become something more and uh, it's such fantastic so who's crimson ren so crimson ren or as like calling early parts of the book he's ren ren is an adopted child and uh, both parent both of his parents at this point in the book are dead He's a bit of a troublemaker also and uh, i think that stems from him being an outcast him being an orphan adopted child and stuff family that is a part of treat him like family so crimson Red, well ren relation to the family is basically the reason why he was adopted because the, the, the dad and his dad ren's dad were best friends and he vowed to look after ren if anything ever happened to them and that's why he adopted ren and he's ren is a part of the family and stuff so he's not just someone adopting someone out of the blue they had a sort of familiarity with them with each other and there's a reason behind it because he vowed to his friend to take care of his kid if anything happens to him and that's basically what the father is doing and i think that's such a lovely thing you don't see that a lot in stories these days it's a very wholesome thing and i think it's a very beautiful thing to do the overarching um story is the family struggling the family needs money they don't have money and the dad he's doing his best as he can but as i said because within certain port where they live they're kind i don't remember where they come from i read it recently but i just don't recall what it was said but i think it was transvania or something along the lines can't even pronounce the word either but they come from the bottom line is they came from somewhere 
and people within certain sport doesn't like people from that place given that fact even though his dad is work um Tristan's dad and Crimson's step friend's step dad this is says dad is working so hard to make ends meet they're still basically unable to make ends meet and that's just a very I don't know personal story I don't know I feel personally I've never really experienced that as in with my family but I can understand from a man's perspective how that would be problematic and troubling to you as a man you have a family depending on you and you need to take care of them but you can't take care of them not because you're not trying to take care of them just because people where you live doesn't like you I think that's a story that a lot of people may be able to sympathize with or even if not sympathize with you may experience that yourself where your parents trying to make things me but because of where they come from overall that's just a very lovely story to me that's what i'm saying everything about the story is just so well done and because of that now the father is in debt to this basically penguin looking type of guy i, I call it the penguin look like penguin penguin from batman looking type of character because he does look he does look like penguin <laughs> He does do look like baby. I don't know if that was an inspiration when they were drawing it or when they thought about a character, but he just looks like Penguin to me. And I think with that character, um, being in debt to the character, the mob boss, and oh, in the mob boss, I think you know that's just it, that's basically the catalyst for the story. That pushed. That's one of the things that pushed the story in direction that it went. The fact that interaction with the mob boss, the mob boss threatened the family, and the dad say, give me some, the dad basically threatened back the mob boss, basically. I didn't think that was badass. That was badass after dad, but it wasn't threatening like I'm gonna kill, kill you or whatever, but well, I think it was something along the line, like if you hurt my family, you know, you can tell that was an inference from what, what the father said. But I think that was a very beautiful thing to see a man being a man. Oh my god, I love that story. I love, I love, I love the story. I love the story. Geeky, Sparkle. Good Geeky, Sparkle. Geeky, Sparkle on Keon. Good job with the story. Another, another thing that happened after the point, basically, the dad isn't able to pay because circumstances. He's trying, but business not making that much money, so he's not willing to pay. And on top of that, earlier that day, Ren and Tristan got himself in a bit of problems, meaning that they turned, firstly, they turned the mob boss, kid, hair green. Secondly, they blew up a shop. They, well, Crimson, well, Ren blew up a shop. Ren blew up the shop. That's additional expense on the dad, basically. With those two type of things, and yeah, that just sucks. So, <laughs> that just sucks entirely. You know, all were the hurt. So, after that point, Ren basically wants to help because Ren doesn't feel like he's put you Ren, Ren feels like he let down the family and he's not pulling his way so he wants to help the family so he sneaked out in the night to try and see how he can make some money he come across a friend that um, a young lady who is a friend to ask uh, is there any way to talk about making money and uh, I don't know as a, as a kid that comes from a similar type of family where family is, is trying but you, you just to make ends meet and that's it and you just want help and I think that's such a beautiful thing Ren basically went there asking the young lady if there is anyone in mages because he, he has magic powers and did I forget to mention that? Ren has magic powers He's a mage of sorts, and uh, he wants to help. There, is, the <laughs> yeah, he wants to help. So what had turns out happened that there was a group of pirates here looking for a lost um, treasure, basically. But it was looking for this house that's supposed to have gold or treasure of riches and wealth. Ren basically stole the map, and uh, so yeah, he stole the map. He stole the map. The kid is problems. Ren is problems. He stole the map and um, went back home. Get Tristan, saying that he, he's going to get the treasure to help the family because we're not losing our house. And uh, Tristan went along. Tristan wrote a note for his mom to get in comfort. They're okay, and they went on the road. Basically, yeah, went on the road. So what they, what happened is that they went to find a ship called True North. So. The ship was a family ship in Ren's family. Something that's the last thing that left of his dad that's in Tristan's dad's shop. 
because is that Christian dad is basically maintaining the ship for Ren so that he can have something of his dad, of his family to to keep, you know. So Ren and Tristan went in to steal, basically, well not steal, but use the ship, <laughs> the flying ship. They use the ship. So what turns out happened is they got accosted by some gang members, the same gang members that Ren stole the map from. And through that that chaos, they met another professor guy that was basically trying to get by the map from the gangsters that stole the map from him. And basically um, defending the kids, defending the kids, protecting the kids from the, the gang. Ren blew the top off of the shop, Tristan died shop, and they, they took off in the ship, right? After that point, yeah, they took off in the ship and then and Ren pulled the guy that was defending, protecting him from the criminal onto the ship also. The guy's a professor. I, his name is not coming to mind. <laughs> oh boy, <laughs> he's a professor of some sort. Um, oh yeah, and the chick friend that Ren visited is also on the ship. And uh, Tristan has a sister also who's now a stowaway on the ship. So it's a ship full of kids and a wonderful character going on an adventure. I think that's the only difference between Ada and Treasure Planet. In a sense, that Treasure Planet is more like a captain that was a, sh- a crew that was already there and the guy jumped on the crew. But so obviously, it's Ren's ship, basically, family ship. So Ren is a captain of the ship and um, they begin to figure out what to do, what to, how to what to do with the professor guy the title of the professor guy to figure out what to do with him and they read the map basically just to figure out where to go they decided to untouch the, the professor guy because um he defended him and if he wanted to hurt them they basically would have done it already that's how we, that's through that exchange we got the, we the information that the professor guy was actually the original um person with the map and the gangsters stole it from him and he's quite fine working with Ren to, to get back um to, to get to, to find the house basically my issue with the professor guy is that he has a look on his face that is very somewhat menacing at some point but I hope he's not up to I hope he's not up to anything evil so apart from that the I'm say apart from that I'm talking about the story here like I'm trying not to spoil a lot because there's a lot happening in the book and I don't want to spoil it for you guys you know but the bottom line is they, they went to a place where they thought the house would be the house is not there um they spoke to the old lady gave them some information of how about the house or whatever and uh, yeah they got the information and they figure out that the map is basically up there it's like the magical map from harry potter where you can see the footsteps of the characters within Howard. It's basically that, but for the, that specific house where every time the house moves, because it has it's a magic house that moves, and every time the house moves, it updates on the map. So they figured that out, and when they were out, so well, at some point, there they, they were the gang, some gangsters catch up back to them. And uh, basically, they had an exchange and a battle. Ren turned himself into Crimson. <laughs> Kinda stupid but funny. Ren is incompetent, but it's a funny incompetent, and no one ever berate him for being incompetent. I see him, tr- you, you know, he's trying. He's not trying to be incompetent. He's trying to help, but he just like doesn't understand his powers. He's always turn things wrong, bad. So he he he, he turns into Crimson, give him the name Crimson Ren, and he eventually um, defeated the pirate, and then this old slew of stories of myths surrounding Crimson Ren of the true north and how he defeated the pirate, how he's this evil monster of a man. And uh, I swear, that at that point, I was so hyped up in the story. It was so amazing. It was so amazing to see the pirates just so ashamed to get beaten by a kid. They just spill all the dumbest stories. Uh, it was amazing. And at the end of it, they get spotted by someone and some other criminals and they chase off of them the end of the story basically at that point so they're having so in next issue i suspect they're making progress on finding the house and so forth but in 
in terms of first issue story i di- i wouldn't know what i miss if i didn't pick it up but i'm happy i did pick it up it's a very good book and i think everyone if you're, if you're not a fan of clownfish tv you should pick up this book it's a story about family values it's a story about trying your best to provide for your family the best way you possibly can without doing anything illegal and it's just not working out you know the story about being accepted being helpful and not being a burden i think that's where ren is coming from in a lot of his cases i think and i think that's a good place for any character to come from he's a very good protagonist to follow him tristan the female love interest basically one thing i forgot to mention <laughs> ren has a pet a feeb basically is this talking cat looking creature that was cool too he was that character was cool as well that it kind of reminds me i don't know what it reminds me of kind of reminds me of pikachu or not pikachu but the cat that's on the, the, the evil guys team talking cat on the evil guys team in pokemon i remember what those people named that cat it, it definitely reminds me of that cat now no, i think about it <laughs> it reminds me of the character reminds me of that cat so it's a phoebe which i figure which basically is a mystical creature i don't know if it's shape-shifting creature but it's a it seems like it's a mystical creature in that world that can talk geeky sparkle and keon to the art the person that did the art good job this book is a fantastic book definitely should pick it up try it check it out and uh, give it a read you will not be disappointed all right this is one of the first books that I picked up that's a first issue that i've read that feel the, f- the pacing felt beautifully paced i didn't feel like I, it was i was moved from here to here it feels like it was a very slow steady story and it kind of reminds me of Alpha Core issue one in a sense, in that regards, how everything that happened happened for meaning, and you can see the story develop on progress, and you know where it's going and where it's ending for this book. It's a very self-contained, somewhat of a self-contained story, but it also promised more in the end. It doesn't end bombastically, but it ends like more is coming, you know. And I'm looking forward for issue two, and I definitely think you guys should check it out. And uh, Clownfish TV, as I said again, good job love it love it keep up the good work and definitely keep up the good work so guys please leave a like on the video if you haven't already check out more videos on the channel like this review content i'm getting very good at reviews now i'm trying to be very more consistent and concise with review leave a like leave a comment what do you like about this review have you read crimson ren and the true nord what what do you think about the story what do you feel about this story you know if you have not read it definitely pick it up check it out you won't be disappointed between the quality of the book itself the art the story beautifully good loved it next um, review content coming well next thing coming probably would be an unboxing video for yara issue one that's coming from reverse see you guys in that one if the guys on club show watching as i say again volume one and two of shadowbinder get that limited thing up so see you guys next one goodbye